GTM Podcast Buddhist Knowledge 38 Blessing of Life Blessing 14 Part 1 Hello everyone You are listening to GTM Podcast Buddhist Knowledge Series on 38 Blessing of Life From the previous episode we learned the importance of taking care of our spouse Thus after having taken care of our family or personal life. Now this time, working forward on spiritual development, progressing on ourselves by not leaving our work undone. What is it about? We will introduce you into this part, the introduction. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe, like and share on our channel, Great Teaching Monk. Available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcast. And you have not listened to the previous episode just yet. It is quite continued to each other. It will make more sense and more understandable as well as enjoyable to listen to them first before we begin on this part. If you are all set, let us begin. Blessing 14. Don't leave your work undone. Introduction The Work Ethic in Buddhism Like many other spiritual traditions, Buddhism is a religion which supports the work ethic. Buddhism is not a religion to tolerate lazy people. Even if you have already fulfilled all the blessings in this grouping by cherishing your parents, children and spouse, if you neglect to live in earning your living, harmony in the family will not come about because of financial difficulties. From a financial point of view, it is necessary to devote oneself to earning one's living in order to support one's children, to have a legacy to pass on to one's children, to support one's spouse, and cherish one's parents. In Buddhism, it is also seen as dutiful to work hard. Because of gratitude, one recognizes that in order to come to working age at all, we are a result of considerable investment of time money, education, love and passion by parents, teachers, and state alike. If we don't put our skills into action, then that investment and goodwill would go to waste. Thus, in Buddhism, a lazy person is also seen as an ungrateful person. Supposing you are already someone who has knowledge from Blessing 9, practical skill from Blessing 10. It doesn't mean that you will automatically be effective in doing your work. Some people with the base of education and experience make no impact on their work if they never get around to doing it. Many think that the reason for procrastination is lessen it on the part of the person involved. However, in recent academic studies, it turns out that the reason we don't do things even when we know it is a good idea is often much more varied. Procrastination coming from fear, especially the fear of being judged to lack ability. Such people have an inferiority complex over their ability and would rather be seen to fail in a task because of procrastination or lack of time than because of lack of ability. Thus, the slipshod work of the final minute rush means that procrastination is an excuse for mediocrity. Procrastination because of perfectionism some people have been brought up with the fear of doing too well, or appearing too keen, or being a goody-goody. 
Consequently, they procrastinate not putting in their best, so that if the result come out well, it doesn't look intentional or magnifies the mid of latent ability. Procrastination from the misconception that work expands to fill the time available. Some people are disorganized to the degree that they feel they have no control over the time they spend on any task. Therefore, they leave tasks to the last minute in order to save time. However, the results of the work often leave a lot to be desired. Procrastination because of resentment of control. For example, when a person doesn't like their boss. Here, procrastination serves as a way to give power to the underdog. To say, get off my back. A sort of game where people try to beat the clock. Or reminding others of things they are starting to take for granted. When the person is not assertive enough to say no directly. Procrastination is sometimes used to control distance in relationships. To make a person more or less reliant on another person or persons. Whatever the reason, the Buddha taught that procrastination, either worldly or spiritual work, will limit one's ability to earn one's living. And the result will be to destroy harmony in one's family life. What is work? Definition of work, physical and spiritual. When we talk of work in a religious context, we mean a means of earning our living. We cannot survive without money. We have to have something to eat. But don't forget that food is of many types. It is just like a tree needs food. But the food that nourished, it is sucked up through the roots. The food for a light bulb is electrical current. Because work is simply a means of earning our living, we thus divide work into two main components, neither of which we can afford to leave undone. 1. Food for the body For our body, We need solid food. To get the food we need for our body, we must find ourselves a job or a career. Work by physical means the means by which we can nourish our body and its scopes also reach to such things as maintaining harmony with the other people around us. 2. Food for the mind Food suitable for the mind is merit. The fruit of our good deeds and spiritual development. Working on the mind doesn't just mean feeling content the whole of the time, but also to develop the mind to become wiser too. That's everyone. These are the introduction of what is mean to work in Buddhism. Then what is unfinished work? We will continue on that part in the next episode, so stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share on our channel, Great Teaching Monk, available on Spotify, YouTube and Apple Podcasts. See you again then.